I'm so pleased to be here with you to uh, introduce the next three master talks uh, as we continue learning at this wonderful conference. So, Molly. There she is. Okay. For 30 years, Molly Alexander has enjoyed a successful career focused on downtown revitalization and economic development, including enterprises in both public and private sectors. Molly is now the executive director of the Downtown Austin Alliance Foundation and a new 501c3 organization in, uh, of the Downtown Austin Alliance. She's with us to speak about global, global growth, easy for me to say, third day of the conference, <laughs> and our role as city shapers and place anthropologists. Welcome my curly-haired friend, Molly Alexander. Good morning. I am so excited to be here. Um, I so appreciate this opportunity to engage with you about our role as city shapers and place anthropologists. Place matters. Place matters in our personal lives. Think about the special places that matter to you. For me, one of my favorite places is Barton Springs a public spring-fed swimming hole that is 68 degrees year-round. I swim here every morning, yes, even in the winter. And as I ease into the cool waters, I think about my day and try to let go of my stress and get centered. It takes me about a quarter of a mile, if I'm honest, to let go of my stress another quarter of a mile to plan my day. And it's the last half mile that I work on gratitude. I first channel my parents, whom I lost many years ago. And it's their love that surrounds me in those cool waters, and I'm able to let go of all of my worries so that when my swim has ended, I feel at peace, which helps me start my day. Barton Springs, is my spiritual place. Place matters in the life of our community. Places can unite and divide us. They can make us feel empowered and they can make us feel belittled, make us feel welcome or shut us out completely. Place is powerful. Millennials, I know you're really tired of us talking about you. <laughs> but I'm glad you finally come of age because your sheer numbers and your personal values are shifting the way we're thinking about place. You've certainly changed the office. Gone are the hours of eight to five, there's no longer a dress code, and by God, you want to bring your dog to work. <laughs> and that's not the only thing changing. You're changing the built environment. Office buildings are changing. Lobbies are being reimagined. Gone are high marble finishes that are cold, sterile, and uninviting. Welcome food halls, co-working spaces, and lounge areas that aren't just for the tenants, but for the neighborhood and the entire community. Hotels have had to reimagine their place too. Hip new designs, outward facing restaurants, and yes, walk up food windows. In fact, this walk up burger stand in downtown Austin is the highest grossing square foot food enterprise of the entire JW Marriott's nationwide portfolio. And it is successful because it's an integral part of the place. We are also seeing changes to your choice of home. Once neglected, undervalued neighborhoods are being transformed by your desire to live here. It's no longer about the dream home, but the dream hood. You'll downsize for the right neighborhood you're with the ability to walk, bike, or scoot to bars, restaurants, cute shops, and neighborhood parks. And you've certainly changed transportation. Lyft and Uber, bike and car share, and of course those dadgum frickin' scooters. 
an industry that hasn't shifted in over 50 years, and you've created chaos in place, turning it completely upside down. It's no longer just about origin and destination, it's simply about getting from place to place. By the year 2050, one in seven people worldwide will live in cities. In the United States, 90% of Americans will live in cities in 30 years. This global shift to cities has huge implications in our lives and our work as city shapers. If I think of my community in the past 30 years, my city has changed dramatically. The left upper hand slide is downtown Austin around 1990, and the one on the right is of today. Downtown Seattle is on the bottom slide around 1989, and the one on the right is today. Economically vibrant cities change, and places all over the world have changed. The upper slide is Vancouver, and the lower slides are Dubai. And if you think about it, there was no there there in Dubai 30 years ago. And today it is the largest city in the United Arab Emirates. 30 years shows a dramatic amount of change, and we know it's going to continue. And the implications are great. Imagine your city will double or triple in size. And what that means to your daily life and your work as a city shaper. Traffic will be two or three times worse than it is today. Your rents, two or three times greater. And other issues, as the separation of rich and poor and our limited natural resources will be exacerbated. We are seeing out of the box creative solutions that defy current norms of city building. Whether it's a 3D printed home that can be built in 24 hours for $3,000, or an urban forest built into a high rise, or perhaps gyroscope mobility options. How we solve for these issues will require a new way of thinking about and building the place. So we need your creativity and your values to help lead the change we seek. So how and where can we make an impact? Think about your downtown. In Austin, half of the land downtown is in the public realm. Parks, open space, streets and sidewalks. And the other half consists of the buildings and the built environment. This is a powerful statistic and offers us new opportunities as we move into the future. And what if we designed our cities around great public places? If the public realm was the first part of the design, not it as an afterthought. How might we incorporate people into the place? Not unlike flexible co-working spaces, what if we looked at the public realm and worked to flex its uses? What if there were no lines in the streets? And how could we manage them based on needs and demand? At rush hour, the majority of the land potentially could be used for mobility and moving people. On Saturday morning, a market, Tuesday afternoon, a cafe. How might we help future-proof the demands and needs of the place and still create meaningful places for our shared experiences? And how might we think about the voids in our cities and take underutilized places and create affordable small emerging shops for entrepreneurs and retail stores? In the UK, Box Park was created in an unusable space next to the freeway, an entire dead zone transformed into neighborhood retail and restaurant space using shipping containers. When my partner and I were in Aspen, Colorado this summer, we were having a picnic lunch when all of a sudden a hailstorm had us running for protection. We found ourselves taking cover in a temporary theater and it surprised, delighted, and inspired me to think about how might we create new theater and creative space venues that could help solve for the loss of theaters and creative spaces in our communities where rising costs are moving out the creative class. When we make vibrant, a 
active and economically prosper prosperous communities, we unintentionally and intentionally gentrify and displace small businesses, artists, and those who are underserved by our community. So how might we think about utilizing the public realm, not only for activation, but also for inclusion? I was in Denver earlier this year and visited a new tiny home community in the Rhino District. The artists in this community realized that they needed to help provide solutions, not just displace people. And they built tiny homes for people experiencing homelessness in an underutilized tract of land near transit. Imagine yourself in an empty lot or under a bridge. What could this place become and how can we provide it meaning? As a Gen Xer, I've had to get over my preconceived ideas about many things. Nine to five, for example. After I moved past the idea that millennials didn't have the same work ethic as I did, I came to love the freedom you gave me, unlocking my own biases about what a work ethic actually means. As city shapers, how can we unlock our biases toward what we think is right and how we build our cities? Place shapes who we are as individuals. It provides us a depth that is hard to explain. And when places resonate with us, we will share them, we will take care of them, and we will remember them always. If places shut us out, restrict our creativity, and don't adapt and change, then they have failed us and will be the burden of future generations. You brought your razor scooters into adulthood and shifted transportation and the way we think about getting around in our cities. I cannot wait to find out what else is possible. Thank you.